Representative Thompson. Thank you. Councillor Barron, do you wish to respond? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, uh, Mr. Ellis, uh, for this question. Uh, the European Union is the economic and political partnership between 27 European communities, of which UK is one. The UK has been a member of the EU since 1973. As a member of the European Union, the UK is bound by various legislation and policies. These are based on a series of treaties since 1950s, which set out the EU's powers and how it can be used. In principle, the European Commission proposes new laws, and the European Parliament and the Council adopt them. The European Commission and the, mem and the member countries then implement them, and the European Commission and European Court of Justice ensures that the laws are properly applied and implemented. The UK Government is responsible, therefore, for incorporating European law into primary legislation in the UK. Where relevant, the UK legislation may ultimately require implementation at a district council level, including Ashfield District Council. For example, the European Convention of Human Rights was incorporated into UK law by the Human Rights Act of 1998. Under Section 6 of the Act, it is unlawful for a public authority to act in a way which is incompatible with the conventional right. A district council is a public authority for the purpose of that act. And as such, Ashfield District Council must not breach the convention rights incorporated into UK law and must abide by the Human Rights Act of 1998. There are numerous other examples of legislation incorporated into the UK which has been originated from EU which benefit and positively protect individuals for example, paternity and paternity rights, and the working times of regulations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Ellis, in accordance with Council Procedure Rule 11A, you may now ask a supplementary question if you wish. Thank you, Madam Chair. I certainly do wish it. Yes. <coughs> Uh, the question was, do you accept the EU government has no lawful jurisdiction over the Asheville community and its representative council? The question, I'd like the Minister show has not been answered. There is a difference between what is lawful and legal. There is two different jurisdictions at work here. One is a Roman jurisdiction, and one, which is the English jurisdiction, is a common law one. That holds to this day. So does the Constitution. Now, the council is in breach of that while it flies. And you've already been told this once. They'll you know, get fed up with telling them to fly on this. So, so do you... Point of order, Jim. I think you have to be a question and uh, not a comment. I am making a question. And needs to be a question, Jim. If I can prove to you then, uh, Councillor Barron, that you do not have to fly it, will you remove the flag? That's only short answer, Madam Chairman. No. <laughs> Could I now ask you, Mr. Ellis, to ask your second question? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Why is the EU flag still flying outside ADC officers when you have all been made aware that it is unlawful in accordance with the oaths of office and current parliamentary legislation? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, may I first point out uh, that the Ashfield District Council is not operating unlawfully, as these, this question indicates. The history of the EU flag goes back to 1955. The Council of Europe, defending human rights and promoting European culture, adopted the present design for its own use. Over the following years, the, the Council of Europe encouraged the emerging European institutions to adopt the flag as well. In 1993, the European Parliament adopted the flag. In 1985, 
it was adopted by all EU uh, leaders as the official emblem of the European Union, called the European Communities at the time. All European institutions have been using it since 1986. Under Schedule 1, Class H of the Town and Country Planning Act, England, Regulations 2007, certain flags, including the Union flag, the EU flag, and the flag of St. George, all of which flies outside our council offices, are allowed to be flown without the need for planning consent. The UK has been a member of the EU since 1973 and forms part of its government. Therefore, the EU government cannot be seen as a foreign to the UK. The flag of the government of the EU is not a political symbol, as it is not the logo of any particular political party. If, for example, there were a referen referendum on the question of this country's continued membership of the EU, then it would be sensible to start flying the flag, at least during the period of Perth. But other than that, I do not see that the Council is prohibited from flying the EU flag. In some situations, the Council is required to display the EU flag at moment. The Council has benefited from the receipt of the EU funding for numerous projects within our district. For example, the Hubble Royal Roy Centre, which such funding, when such funding is received, it is a requirement from the funding for the Council to display the EU flag emblem on those buildings. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Ellis, have you a question? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> through the um, uh, Madam Chairman, the point of order. I think there's a breach in the council's uh, regulations here that we're being considered. We'll have to adjourn the I don't think there was any law or regulations against it. You were informed not to do so. But that doesn't help. No. It does. I've explained and so far. I'll turn it off. Please. Please don't. Because we want to get through the business. Is that a request or is it an order? I'm asking you not to do it, but if you okay, I'll have to do a request. Well, have to do it. Yeah. It would, we need to get through the business, it would help. We will adjourn the meeting if you, if you continue to do it, and then we'll have to ask you to leave. Please understand, this is a request. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Got interesting. <laughs> 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 
Chairman, if members who've been recorded have requested that the images are deleted from the um, equipment, that's been refused. On the basis that that's been refused, the members are not going to be no, I'm not, I'm not recording now. You're on the phone then, I asked you to speak to your phone as well. It's important. You know the procedure. Chairman, if the images are not deleted and that is the requirement of those that have been videoed, then I don't see that we have any other alternative. We cannot continue with the meeting until this has been resolved. The option clearly is for the council to call the police to want to deal with this matter. Yes. Are they not public servants? I beg your pardon? They're not public servants then? Who is not? The people who are being recorded. Chair, can I just have a word please? Uh, the law says that if anybody is doing any recording, before they record, they must let the people learn what they are going to do. Because if they don't, it is against the law, and they must learn to do it. Very you know the